the heart of of women of beauty the my heart is and, and of this ministry is to bring back understanding to women uh, not just in in the Christian realm but in all realms of how beautiful you are and how God created you. There's so many lies out there, not only in uh, religion, but lies that maybe have been spoken to you over time, um, lies of, uh, of even society. Um, and, and so my heart is to bring, bring an understanding again, a balance of of inner beauty and, and outer beauty and allowing that to to flow out of us so that we're not scared of it. I think so much so many times women are scared of their own beauty and they're scared to let it shine. They're, they've been told, well, don't do this or someone might think that or you know, don't say this or don't be like that or there's so many don'ts that we don't know what to do. And so that's my heart in these sessions. Uh, how it'll look every time will be slightly different. Uh, I only know today what God wants today. Okay. <laughs> the title for today is The King Desires Your Beauty. And I love that title. The King Desires Your Beauty. And I'll go into that deeper yet of where that title came from. I'm going to go into scriptures that, that potentially could uh, uh, maybe stir things up in you, uh, things that maybe you've been taught about those scriptures or things that might rattle your do's and don'ts that you've put out for yourself. But I encourage you to keep an open mind and to allow... Allow God to speak to you in deeper ways in those scriptures, in deeper ways than perhaps you knew before. And I'm desiring that today for myself too. Every time I study to preach, by the time I start preaching, the things that come out of my mouth edify me as well. And so I don't know half the time everything that's going to come out. So, in fact, most times I listen to it later and go, wow, I learned from that, right? So that's a good thing. But what you pull and what you need is what's going to come out, right? The gifting of, of God, giftings of God work for what your needs are if you receive them. So as you pull tonight and your hearts are open, watch God move. I also want to encourage you that if, if you've been hurt by religion, and I say that because I think many have, that... There, there will be some scriptures that I'm going to start reading that you may just feel like closing off. Please don't. Please don't. Because I'm not going to go in the direction you may think. Okay? I want to start at Second Chronicles 3, verses 6 to 7. And it says this. And he adorned the house with precious stones for beauty. And the gold was gold of, of parfum. That's, that's a, a region. He lined the house, the holy place, its beams, thresholds, walls, and doors with gold, and engraved cherubim on the walls. He, do, he adorned the house with precious stones. So why am I starting it? this kind of passage for a night of talking about women of beauty. My purpose is for you to see and and realize and and connect again to how much God desires beauty, how much everything in the word, every everything I looked up that was that the word beauty and beautified and beautiful and anything to do with beauty that 
we, it would talk about God himself, it would talk about Jesus, how his, Jesus' feet are beautiful, how, how, how God enthroned is beautiful, how God Almighty is beautiful. And the fact is, is that anything that God honors and loves, he's made beautiful. And, and that's you. He has made you beautiful. He's, he's made you beautiful. It says he lined the house, the holy place. He considers you a holy place. Oh, that's throwing some people off. Listen to this. I would venture to say that most of you here, if not all, are women of God, Christians. I see it. God has placed his Holy Spirit within you. He has placed Jesus within you, and he himself is beautiful. The Holy Spirit is that holy place, right? It's, it's a holy place. So he considers the temple, our bodies, the tabernacle, the holy place. And he desires that holy place to be filled with gold, with precious stone, to be engraved with cherubim, everything beautiful. But he started off that way as well. Every newborn baby, every little girl, whether they know it or not, whether they know God or not, whether they have the Holy Spirit, whether they have Jesus, has been created that way. All of them. He desires beauty. He desires to show you off. He desires to go, you see her? She's beautiful and she's mine. That's why he made women beautiful. One of the reasons. And as we were singing, that heart of worship came out of you. And it was beautiful. And that's where it begins. It begins in a heart of worship to be able to release it. It's in you. You can't deny it. You may not know it. You may not see it. But it's in you. And it starts stirring in that heart of worship. It starts stirring when we cry our hearts out to God, when we worship him from our very depth of our being. Not just in song, but in everything we do, in everything we speak, in everything we say, in how we adorn ourselves. We worship him. That's going to look different for every woman. Every woman looks different. It doesn't matter how you look, though. That beauty is there. Another interesting thing with beauty, as I was looking it up, there's many, many different Hebrew and Greek forms of it. I won't go into all of them. Don't worry. Don't panic about that. I will some, but my point is, there's so many forms of beauty that God talks about in the Bible, and if it, w if it wasn't important to him, it wouldn't be in there so much. If it wasn't important to him, he wouldn't have lined the heavens of gold and of pearl and of jewels and Right? He adorned the house with precious stones for beauty. That beauty is honor and excellence and splendor. It actually even need, it even needs garments and jewels. So for for <laughs> it's the attribute of God. And it, and it even means that it's boasting of an individual. Remember how I said God was like 
He's boasting. <laughs> when we can grab a hold of that inner beauty and we can allow it to shine, the threat of the beautiful woman beside us leaves. Right? When we can grab hold of understanding how beautiful God created us, it removes judgments, it removes doubts, it brings back a place of safety, not only personally feeling secure in God and safe in God, but it also allows us to be able to connect with one another. Because now the, the jealousy's gone, the judgments are gone, and we can look at the girl beside us and say, wow, she's beautiful. Look at God shine through her. And now instead of fighting, we're thinking, oh, I don't like her, right? And really you do. You can pull from all the beauty within her and you'll feel more beautiful. And you connect with the women around you. Do you know that when we allow that beauty to shine, that even, even the men around us will honor and respect and lift us up and protect us? When we allow it to shine out? It's how it's meant to be. And then we'll feel more beautiful because we're safe. My heart's desire for this room of women and every full room of women that comes into this place. Awful grammar, I know that was, but that's okay. You know what I mean. That every single one will be able to grab hold of the beauty within them and the beauty of the woman beside them and pull on every beautiful thing in them, every gifting, every precious stone, every piece of gold, so that we're not lacking ourselves. Psalms 96.6 says, Honor and, ma and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We can't help it. We can't help that we're beautiful. Every man out there is thankful that God made us. Right? They're not denying that we're beautiful. Why are we denying it? Right? <laughs> I'm getting a nod back there. <laughs> Psalms 45.11. This is where the title came from. It says this. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. Should maybe throw some beauty out to the lot of people out there. <laughs> They're just sad they can't come in because they're men. I hear the men's voices. <laughs> they must have heard me. They're quiet now. I'll just put something funny in here in between before I continue because we're talking about men suddenly. Um, I actually had somebody on Facebook say they were coming. It was a man. I just went with it. <laughs> I didn't really think they'd come, but. <laughs> I read this verse again. Psalms 45, 11. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. Now this is where I don't need to close off. I'm going to. I'm going to elaborate on what Lord means. This is in the Hebrew. 
in the Old Testament. Allow God to penetrate the hurts of the past. In this passage, the L is capitalized, which is Lord, our Lord, our Savior, right? But it also is referring to men. The king will greatly desire your beauty. Men greatly desire your beauty. Do you know what it does to a man when we allow our beauty out? It keeps them in a safe place. It keeps them out of areas of lust. Because the beauty that is good fulfills them. In a healthy way. I'm glad it's being recorded because that was really good. <laughs> I want to hear that later. <laughs> it also refers to God, the Lord our God, the Lord of the whole earth. It also refers to husbands, to prophets, to governors, to princes, to kings, to fathers, to priests. So the king will greatly desire your beauty. Unfortunately, in society, in religion, the beauty of a woman has been squashed so much so that men feel bad if they even notice that a woman is beautiful. Right? They've been told it's wrong. And the guilt and the shame brings them to places of lust. Because God has placed within every man to recognize beauty. God himself recognizes beauty. And if God himself can recognize beauty, he doesn't let it go to a lustful place. It's always perfect. If God himself has created man in his image to recognize beauty, he is capable, more than capable, to enjoy the beauty in every woman because that's how God created him. Hmm. Thanks for keeping open. I know I'm rattling it up a little bit. I see that. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes you got to hear things a few times to get the hurts out, to get the old out. I know full well that many of you have heard things, hurtful things about yourselves that are not true. Many of you have had homes or even fathers that have been abusive or been in abusive relationships. And so it takes a bit more time to get a hold of the fact that a man can enjoy your beauty in a healthy way that a father can enjoy your beauty in a healthy way. But keep your heart open, because they can, and they do. First and foremost, recognize that God, your Father, is always perfect, and He enjoys your beauty in a healthy way. And if you can open your heart up to Him, that's the biggest beginning you'll have. The rest will follow. Hmm. 
Psalms 96, 9. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before and reverently fear him all the earth. This beauty means to honor and the holy adornment of public worship and the glory of the king. That's what we were doing before. We were honoring God with our beauty. We were allowing our hearts of worship to come out. Do you know that every woman, when they allow the true heart of worship to come out, their countenance changes? I see it. Every woman looks breathtakingly beautiful when that heart of worship comes out to God. It's amazing. Maybe we should have had the camera up here so when you're worshiping you could watch it after. Maybe we'll do that sometime. I, and I feel it. I mean, I wasn't facing you guys, but I felt it. It was tremendously amazing. Imagine if we would have kept on worshiping. Imagine how, just imagine. Now imagine next time you go into a place of worship, a public place of worship, or, or you're worshiping him in your heart, or you're communicating with him, and you allow your heart to open to him, and the heart of worship, and you adore him. If you can imagine that your beauty is shining out as you do that, you're going to start recognizing your own beauty. You're going to start seeing it. You're going to start feeling it. You'll start recognizing it. You'll start walking out there going, oh, I know why they're looking at me. God made me beautiful. You will. You will feel it. And it won't be a negative thing because they'll honor it. Be okay with a man opening a door for you because when you allow the beauty out, he'll honor it. Just watch it happen. I want to talk a little bit about the balance of the inner and the outer beauty. Because that's been confused in society and in church, I believe. Are we doing okay still? Yeah, okay. Let's go to 1 Peter 3, verse 4, and let's not close off. In fact, let me read the part of the passage that I want to bring out today and go home later and read the rest if you want to. Okay? Because I don't want you to get hung up on a part with something that you've heard from different kind of teaching. Okay? I'm not saying it's all bad. I just don't want you hung up on it. Okay? Verse 4 of 1 Peter 3 says, But let it be the inward adorning, the beauty of the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. I'm going to read that again. But let it be the inward adorning, the beauty of the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. When we have peace within ourselves, we will emanate beauty. We ourselves will feel beautiful when we have peace. When our heads aren't scrambled and we're not worried about everything, and you all know what I'm talking about because you've all had places where you've had peace, where your heart can just worship God because you're just you're so at peace. You approach people differently when you're at peace, right? Someone's a little agitating, but you're at peace, and so you handle it beautifully, right? Right? 
I want to pull out a little piece from verse 3 and a little piece from verse 5 because I want to pull it together. In verse 3 it says, Let not yours be the merely external adorning. Now it says, don't let it be merely, don't let it be just outward adorning. Too often people get stuck with that passage and they go, well, it shouldn't be outward adorning. I'm just not going to worry about my outer because I'm not supposed to be vain, so I'm just going to let the inside be beautiful and shine out, right? It doesn't say don't. It says don't let it be merely, not just outward, right? Right. Verse 5, part of it says that the women of old who hoped in God were accustomed to beautify themselves. Let's just look at the example that everybody knows, Queen Esther, right? How long did those women, not just her, but all the women who were to meet the king, how long did they not beautify themselves before they even saw him? It was customary that women would beautify themselves outwardly. So that passage says, not just inwardly and not just outwardly but the fullness of it, the balance of it. And if God himself makes everything beautiful, makes everything with perfected gold and gems, why would it be wrong for us to adorn ourselves and worship him like that? Hmm. Remember I said, I think on it. Don't throw it out yet. Ponder it. Look at nature. Look at everything God has created. Look at our homes. We invite someone down. We clean our house. We put nice candles out sometimes. Well, you know what I'm saying. At Christmas, we decorate. We make it feel welcome and homey. We make it beautiful. We want to honor the people that come in to see us. So we give them our best. Why wouldn't we give God our best? Thank you, God, for making us beautiful. Thank you, Lord. I will worship you in it, in everything in me and out of me. One last passage. We're not bringing this to full conclusion tonight, but to the beginning of it. So you'll have to come back. That's not a tactic. It's just I can't talk here for three hours. You wouldn't be able to handle it. <laughs> you might fall asleep. This passage is precious to me. It's a passage that I've pondered for years and years and years. And it's probably a passage that would be one of those unlikelies in the Old Testament. One of those hidden ones that you wouldn't necessarily think on the way I'm thinking on it. But I'm going to bring it to you how I've been thinking on it. Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel... In returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and trusting confidence shall be your strength. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, that resting is bringing a quiet attitude to him. You shall be saved. 
you shall be liberated, you shall be delivered, you shall be victorious. That's what that word means. It actually means more than that, but there, those, that's just three meanings of it. In quietness, in stillness, in rest, in peace, in settledness, being undisturbed, and in confidence, you'll find your strength. I think you all can agree that when you have peace, you feel strong. When you have peace, you can conquer anything ahead of you. The greatest things that could happen, the hardest things that could happen, if you have peace, you hear God in it. And if you hear God in it, you have confidence in Him. You trust Him. When we rest in Him, when we quiet ourselves before Him, when we allow peace to come in, our trust in Him builds. It becomes easier to worship Him. Sometimes it's a, a place that we have to choose to worship Him. But when that confidence and that peace is there, it will come out even more naturally. And it will, and it will cycle like that, right? As we worship Him, we have more peace. As we worship Him, we trust Him more. It just keeps going and keeps going. And that inner beauty starts stirring. Because as we spend time with Him, we recognize who we are. Because when you spend time with Him, He is going to lavish love on you. He's going to show you how He sees you. And suddenly every moment, every step of the way, as you continue to trust Him, and you're listening to Him, you trust Him more because you're hearing Him, you're in peace, it continues and continues and continues. And that beauty in you stirs and stirs and stirs. And that confidence when you walk out there, everyone notices. Your whole countenance changes because you know that you know who you are and how God created you. This is the beginning of Women of Beauty. My heart's desire for you today was to get a peace, to allow that beauty to start stirring in you again. I would like to do something with who's willing. Now I said we weren't going to have ministry time up front and we're not. But I'd like to stir up your beauty if you let me. <laughs> I've seen women change right before my eyes when they've allowed me to stir up their beauty. It's been amazing. It's like their eyes are wider and they're sparkling and there's less wrinkles and they're it, it's like their whole countenance changes. This confidence just rises up and they come back to me later and they go, I don't know what happened, but I just feel different. I look in the mirror and I go, wow, look at that. That's a good thing, guys. That's a good thing. You've been told it's not. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be in awe of what God created. It's a good thing to look in the mirror and go, wow, God, you're amazing. Look what you created. And my heart's desire is that every single one of us can grab hold of the depth of that deeper and deeper every day. Every day. It's not all going to happen at once, although you may feel that way. But get ready for more. If you think you've obtained it all, there's more.
This is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to look. I'm going to close my eyes, but I'm going to pray for you. And whoever desires that beauty to be stirred up, just lift your hands up to God. Allow him to stir it as I pray for you, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you for every woman here. I thank you for how beautiful that you've created each one of us. And Lord God, my heart's desire is that each one of us would be able to grab hold of the the depth of what that means for each of us. And Lord God, as much as my heart aches for it, yours aches even greater. Yours aches even greater. So in the name of Jesus, I stir up the beauty within each woman here. In the name of Jesus, I remove the, the pains of the past that would stop the truth of that beauty from rising up. I bind every force, every lie, every, and I silence it in the name of Jesus that has come against your creation, that has come against the beauty in each one of us. And now in Jesus' name, I stir that beauty up. I pull it to the surface in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I, yeah, I thank you, Lord, that as we walk out of here, there'll be a newness in our step. I thank you, Lord God, that as we go into our homes, that that the men around us, that our kids, that that everyone we meet, even in our workplace or even in the store, that they're going to go and they're going to do a double take. And Lord God, I ask that you'd quicken each one of us to it, that you'd quicken each one of us to recognize that beauty, that the truth would stir up in us to be able to receive it. And I ask, Lord God, for grace for us to be able to receive the fullness of it. Not only tonight, but as, I, as each day continues and as we learn the depths of what it looks like. In Jesus' name, amen.